Hi guys, so in this video, we're going to handle the Enterprise Networking Project 11, the Advanced or Secure Enterprise Networking Project. So um, this video I've really dedicated for guys from India, being that my teacher was an Indian, so, uh, so I've dedicated this video for guys from India, okay? So Indians in the room, please feel at home. And uh, you have to know that this video is meant for you guys. And uh, you have to give your best so that you understand this video because it's a very, very uh, important video. A very secure, advanced enterprise networking project for you guys. Okay? All right. So don't be left out. Please subscribe. Like the video. Share with friends. And please, just indicate that you are present in the room. Just uh, drop a comment below. Your like, your subscription, your comment will be highly appreciated. All right? Okay. So without any further ado, I will just like to know that today are in number project number eleven, and we've been covering projects from project one to tenth project. So today we're in number eleven. Okay. So if you want to access the classes, just go back to our channel, uh, Guru Technical Talking Training. Okay. Then you go to playlists and you let it load then you scroll until you see um until you see a playlist by the name enterprise networking project so when you click on this uh, playlist so all of these 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 are all the projects that we've been covering since we started this series of enterprise network design and implementation okay all right and if you want to get any file, if you are interested in any file, any packet is a file of either of, the, of all of these projects, maybe, okay, from project one to project uh, 10, just click on the join button, okay? Then after you've clicked on the join button, there's a video here. You can listen to the video so that you understand uh, what this channel uh, membership entails here, okay? And the join channel and join channel membership. After joining channel membership, Email me or use the WhatsApp number that I have. Or I, I will indicate on the description part of the video or the first comment. I will send the file directly to you, okay? Or you can just write a comment that you've joined the channel membership and you want a file. Just write a comment with your email. I'll just email you directly, okay? All right, so thank you so much, guys. So uh, without any further ado, I'll just go back to our packet tracer and let you know that we should begin uh, design and implementing networking project 11, which is secure and advanced enterprise network. Okay, all right. So these are very interesting project. Advanced enterprise networking project 11. Design and implementation implementation of a secure healthcare information network system. Okay. So there is a company, uh, the D Dr. Shefi, Dr. David Shet Labs Limited is an Indian healthcare service provider specializing in diagnostic and related healthcare tests. Headquartered in Mumbai, the company conducts tests on blood, urine, and various bodily tissues. It strategically employs information technology to digitize and securely access and market its services. The company's offices are located on the 35th, 36th, and 37th floors of the Great Namaste Towers. On the, 35, on the 35th floor, you'll find the pharmacy and medical labs serving approximately 200 users, along with the reception and guest area accumulating around 1,000 users. The 36th floor houses the doctors and the consultancy department, catering to about 200 users, and also manages procurement, HR, and finance operations for 300 users. The 37th floor is divided between the internal auditors and corporate functions involving around 120 users and an entire IT team consisting of 300 users. The IT team is further structured in various teams, including brand and marketing, IT support, sysadmin, network admin, network security engineers, 
cybersecurity analysts, um, software engineers, cloud engineers, and IT management. Recognizing, this, recognizing substantial growth potential, the company anticipates that the user count for each department will double by 2025, necessitating a focus on scalability during the design and implementation phases. All right. So uh, there's a company actually uh, which is uh, which uh, deals with the healthcare services. Uh, Dr. David Shetty Labs Limited deals with the healthcare services. Okay. All right. So uh, it goes ahead to say that as an integral part of company's ICT infrastructure, the following components have been incorporated: internet service provider. The company has established a subscription with Airtel to ensure internet service connectivity. Network security. The Cisco as a firewall from this one series has been acquired to enhance network security, network routing. A Cisco One router has been deployed to facilitate efficient data routing within the network. Note, for some reason, this router will be used for VoIP services. A Cisco One router also will be used for voice over IP services, okay? All right, so switching infrastructure. The network includes two catalysts, 3850, 48 port switches. These are much layer switches, actually. Eight catalysts, 2960, 48 port switches, okay? And two catalysts, 2960, 24 switches to ensure robust local network connectivity. Number five, server hardware and virtualization. Two HP ProLiant DL38 Gen 10 servers will be utilized for virtualization through VMware ESXi hypervisor. They will host multiple virtual machines, including a Red Hat directory server responsible for managing user information in an LDAP-based directory. The server will handle DNA services and IPv4 address allocation for DCP hosts. The two servers are used for failover purposes. So you've understood that we have two physical servers, which are HP product, and uh, we virtualize them uh, actually using which platform, which which hypervisor, VMware ESXi. Okay. So being that we've virtualized them. Um, we're going to uh, install various multiple virtual machines, okay? So to uh, to achieve failover or higher availability, actually we should do a failover because we have two servers. We should replicate the uh, the virtual machines on each server such that when one virtual machine is compromised, uh, we fail over to the other virtual machine on the other server, okay? All right. So internal uh, servers. Internally hosted servers include health information system, email server, file server, uh, ensuring data accessibility and security and security. So all of these servers, all of these servers, uh, I believe they are hosted as virtual machines inside the physical servers. Okay. Okay. All of these servers. Okay. The inform health information system email server, file storage, and other servers uh, are, have been hosted inside the two physical, physical servers, okay? Okay, as virtual machines. Virtualization is very important. So storage. Two storage devices, NetApp product will be used to facilitate storage of resources. Remember, uh, the server actually doesn't have enough storage to keep all, uh, all the files and all the resources. So we should provide it to the storage. So we're going to use a NetApp storage, okay? Two, two of them, okay? Failover, primary and secondary. The, we have two physical servers here, primary and secondary. We have two storage here, primary and secondary, okay? Okay, so finally, voice and wireless infrastructure. Cisco voice gateways will be employed for VoIP and telephony services. Additionally, a Cisco wireless LAN controller and 10 lightweight access points 
labs will be central will be centralized will centralize the management of wireless network okay okay then we understand that cloud computing as an important technology is used to connect clients across the world to the company services and resources thus the healthcare system is linked to the aws cloud platform to facilitate delivery thus this is one of the core business functions of the firm the developers and the cloud engineers use several cloud resources to ensure seamless business continuity the proposed network should allow the team to access these resources aws they use aws cloud platform okay all right so due to security requirement it has been decided that all one all lan will and and VoIP users will be in a separate network segment within the same core network. The firewall will be, will be used to set security zones and filter traffic that moves in and out of the zones based on the configured inspection policies. All right, so you've been hired as a network security engineer to design the network according to the requirements set by the scene and management. You will consult an appropriate network, a robust network design model to meet the design requirement. You are required to design and implement a secure, reliable, scalable, and robust network system that is paramount regarding the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data and communication. So the Indians in the room, you see how uh, this project is very important. Please don't be left out. Follow the video keenly. I'm going to try my best to explain it step by step so that you don't miss uh, even uh, a dot. Okay. So, the favor that you can do me, just make sure that you subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, you share with friends and drop a comment. Thank you. All right. So, we have the requirements. The company places a strong emphasis on achieving top tier performance. Redundancy, scalability, and availability within the network infrastructure. As such, your task involves creating a comprehensive, comprehensive network design and executing its implementation. To facilitate this endeavor, the company has designated specific IP address ranges. So all the WLAN users, all the Wi-Fi wireless users, will use this range. All the LAN, the wired guys, those who are connecting cables from the walls, they are going to use this subnet. All the IP phones, the voice, they are going to use this subnet. The DMZ, remember, we have two servers. Being that we have firewalls, we, sh we should set zones. And one of the zones that we are going to set is a demilitarized de de zone, DMZ. Demilitarized zone which is the DMZ, and the DMZ zone will contain our servers, under which subnet, this subnet. Then a public IP address, remember, we cannot access internet with the private IP address. They have to be, we have to use public IP address, okay? All right, and this is going to be our public IP address, okay? All right, so technical requirements. Utilize Cisco Packet Tracer for design and implementation of the network solution. Hierarchical network design. Implement hierarchical network module that incorporates redundancy for enhanced network resilience. ISPs. Establish connectivity to an, I to an, ITEL, to an Airtel ISP router within the network infrastructure. Wireless LAN controller. Ensure that each department is, in, is equipped with wireless access, access point to provide Wi-Fi access to employees, corporate users, external auditors, and guests, all centrally managed by wireless LAN controller. So we are going to have how many SSD for, for employees, for corporates, the managers, uh, and uh, other corporates, external auditors, those who audit, uh, who, when we try to outsource uh, uh, that service of auditing, okay, and also guests, okay. So we're going to provide how many SSID, Wi-Fi names, for, okay, VoIP. Deploy IP phones in each department to support 
Void communication. Villain. Maintain villains with the following IDs. 10, ID 10 for LAN, for LAN users, 50 for VLAN, and 99 for VoIP across the entire network. Either channel. Implement link aggregation control protocol for either channel configuration, enhancing link aggregation efficiency. Spanning tree protocol port first and BPD guard configure STP port first and BPD guard to expedite port transition from blocking to forwarding states. Subnetting. Utilize subnetting techniques to allocate the appropriate number of IPs to each network group. Basic settings. Configure fundamental dev device settings, including host names, console password, mobile password, banner messages, password encryption, and disabling IP domain lookup. Intervillain routing. Enable devices in all departments to communicate with each other, with one another, by configuring respective multilayer switch for intervillain routing. The core switch. Assign IP address to the multilayer switches to enable both routing and switching functionalities. DSCP server. Ensure that all devices in the network excluding IP forms, obtain IP addresses dynamically from Active Directory Server located at the server farm. Active Directory Server. Remember, we add uh, something like uh, Red Hat Directory Server here. Where is it? Yes. Red Hat Directory Server. The same way we normally have Windows, uh, Windows Server. So this for Linux, this now is for Linux environment. Let Red Hat uh, directory server, okay, uh, which will provide uh, DNA services and DCP services. All right. Cisco uh, 2811 router. Deploy this this one capable for supporting telephony service. Remember, we were told that for some reason, the one router will be used for telephony service, okay, and the only router that supports telephony service. In the packet tesa, on packet tesa, is 2811 router. So we've been told that the one router should be or should also provide telephone services. So maybe uh, we can separate the traffic using protocols like uh, VRP, which I mean v VRF, virtual router forwarding, which is not supported on Cisco packet tesa, Okay. Okay, number 15, HSRP. Implement a high availability router protocol such as HSRP to achieve redundancy, load balancing, and failover capabilities. Static addressing. Allocate static IP addresses to devices located in the server. Good. Telephone service. Configure VoIP on the one router and assign dial numbers in the format 3 dot dot dot. Good. Good, good. So uh, let's go ahead. Routing protocol. Utilize OSPF as the routing protocol to advertise routes on the firewall, routers, and the multi layer switches. Standard access control is for SSH. Establish a simple standard uh, ACL on the VTY line to permit remote administ administrative tasks via SSH only for senior security network security engineer PC. So meaning uh, we only the only the only device that will connect to um, the networking devices remotely is the senior network engine network security engineer PC. Okay. Okay, so number 20 is Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance Firewall. Configure default static routes, basic settings, security levels, zones, and policies on the fire on the firewall to define access control and resource utilization within the network. Final testing. Conduct a thorough testing to verify proper communication. Ensure that all the configured element function are intended. Okay, so that's that's the end of this project. Guys, this is a very important project. I repeat, this is a very very important project. This is a very very important project. Okay. Okay. So we want to design a network topology of the company and implement it using. Cisco packet tracer, as we've been told here, as a security, as a 
Imagine you have been hired as a network security engineer. So we are required to design and implement this network security. Okay? And among the devices that have been bought by the company includes this. Okay? All right. So without any further ado, guys, let's start the design and implementation part of this important project. So I go back to our packet tester and we start on the descent part. So on the descent part, we stop, we start from top down. Okay. We start from top going down. Right? Okay. So when I start from the top going down, I only want to focus on our infrastructure going down from the firewall going down first. Okay. So for the firewall, just click on the firewall security device, then try to choose 5506X firewall. Then I put it somewhere here. Let me just put it somewhere here. Yes. So this is our firewall. Then we've been told that there is a one router. Okay. A one router that is responsible for both uh, routing capability, advanced routing capability, and the VoIP. So we just click on the routers, and we choose 2811 router at this point. And you put it somewhere here. So this is our one router, and the firewall is somewhere there. Okay. Then we've been told also that the company has how many switches here? The company, the company you can see at as two catalyst 38, 50, 48 port switches. Those are multi layer switches. So we are going to take how many multi layer switches? Two multi layer switches. So uh, for multi layer switches, kindly ensure you choose 3650. 3650. 3650. Yes, and the first thing that you do, just, just turn them on, just drag this AC power supply and put it there. And also this one, drag this AC power supply and put it there, and just close. Then we go down, and we've been told that eight catalysts, we, um, hmm, we have eight catalysts, 29, 60, 48 port switches. So let's say these are access switches. And how many departments do we have? How many departments do we have? So we go back to departments so that we under, understand departments that we have. Because you can see, we already have the distribution layer and the core layer. So we need access layer. For access layer, you have to go to the uh, case study and understand how many departments are here. So you understand that we have 35th, 35th, 36th, and 37th floors. So on the 35th floor, you can see we have um, uh, pharmacy and medical labs combined. Then another one is the reception and guest area. So 35th floor, we have how many departments? Two floors. 36th floor, you can also see we have doctors and consultancy departments combined, plus uh, HR, I mean procurement, HR and finance departments combined. So, so two slow floors again. Two, I mean two departments again. At seventh floors, also we have internal auditors and corporate functions. Uh, combined, then we also have IT team. So, approximately we have six major departments, and all these departments are uh, the result of combination of two or more departments. Okay, all right. So, um, hmm. we have six departments, so we need six access layer switches. So, for access layer switches, you just choose 2960 and you just put it. Okay, so uh, we already uh, added the six access layer switches, as you can see, for the six departments, right? All right. So the department that is remaining actually is uh, the DMZ, okay? So let's add a DMZ on this side so that uh, we can have the DMZ. So this is the DMZ, and you guys can remember, in the DMZ, in the DMZ, we should have how many... Uh, we should have how many uh, devices? We should have at least uh, two HP ProLand DL38, J1, 
a 9, 10 physical servers and two storage devices, maybe plus other equipment. So let me just finish on the DMZ part. So for the DMZ part, I'm just going to include servers here and say that there's, that's a one physical HP ProLand server and that's the primary one. And you have two storage devices, one secondary and primary, okay? All right. And then another thing that I'm going to include here, guys, another thing that I'm going to include here, guys, is that now let's go outside now, okay? Let's include the outside uh, components. From the firewall, we connect to an Airtel ISP. So for ISP, you just click on the routers and choose this one, ISR, okay? 4331. And put that, just put it somewhere here. So that's our uh, Airtel ISP router, okay? So the Airtel ISP router will connect to cloud. So let's just, in this case, let's just assume a cloud is just another router here. Even with this one, okay? Okay, so this AWS cloud, it connects to AWS cloud. Okay, then inside of the AWS cloud, we have, we have what? We have some resources. So uh, let's say there's a, a virtual, uh, a virtual switch there in the cloud. Okay, All right. Let's just assume that there's a virtual switch in the cloud. The switch connects to maybe, um, let's just assume that it connects to maybe an uh, AWS easy to insta instance which is there. Uh, then maybe uh, S3, uh, AWS3 resources, and maybe other relational, relational databases, okay? And uh, AWS cloud platform, okay? All right. So uh, basically what is remaining here, uh, huh, we can now do a connection uh, between the device that we placed. Remember, we've not placed um, things like uh, the end devices under the access layer, okay? And the only device that we're missing right now is um, is a wireless access controller. So for the wireless access controller, I think uh, we just click on the networking devices, then you click on the wireless devices and ensure that you choose 2505 wireless LAN controller and put it here. And you should know that uh, we should connect this wireless LAN controller to either of the mat layer switches, but that one will limit redundancy. So I just want to include a switch here. Yes. So this switch will connect to the two mat layer switches and the switch connects to wireless LAN controller such that when one mat layer switch is down, the other link is functional, okay? All right, because I don't want to connect the wireless LAN controller direct, directly to, to one mat layer switch because one mat layer switch can malfunction and all the wireless traffic is interfered with, okay? All right, so that is done, good. All right, so what's remaining is just well, let's do connection and guys, I want us to be very keen when while daily doing connections. I normally start from top going down, right? So, and we use automatic. So we just use automatic. You start from top going down, okay? Then also, Okay, so um, when I try to connect from from this router here, the multiplayer switch now, you can see, cannot connect to the connected port. So that means that uh, this router has limited ports remaining. You can see if I try to hover, you can only see there are only two fast Ethernet ports. So you just click on the router and make sure you turn it off. There is a button here. The one indicated on the with the zero. Just click on the zero, and uh -huh, you can just drag. We want to drag a fast Ethernet port here, and you drag this oh, this um, and you, then you drag this module here. Nm ifn to fae to w, and you just place it there. That's okay. Then you turn on 
that out again and you close and then when you try to take and place there and you now connect and if you try to hover you can see we have first ethernet 0, 0, 0, 001 1, 0, and 11 1, 1, okay okay Then we go ahead and connect from the multi layer switches to the access layer switches. So we do it very, very fast at time. You start from the top, going down. All right, so I've connected the devices to the respective uh, core devices so what I'm gonna do I'm just going to include end devices so let me just connect this one first plus a computer here that will need to manage uh, the wireless LAN device all right so now let's connect end devices. Among the end devices that we want to connect are IP phones. Uh, we need a computer actually, so we need a computer. We need a computer, just one computer is enough in this lab. We need a printer, which is a must, a network printer. And then we need, um, what do we need again? Let's just say uh, IP phone. We need an IP phone, good, right? good then we need an access point so just click on the networking devices wireless devices and choose uh, this well uh, lightweight access points and put it there okay all right so under our access points what do we what do we need we need at least a smartphone we need a tablet let's say a tablet we need a smartphone and a laptop actually because uh, guests or users have laptops they have phone they have tablets then what to do we want to copy all this we want to copy all these to all other remaining um, departments so before that what we do just click on the pc here and turn the option dc uh, option to dcp and close click on the printer here and turn the option to DCP and close. So click on the IP phone here and turn it on. Drag the power adapter and place it on that hole. There's a hole here, okay? Place it until that red circle with the, uh, with the line at the center is, has disappeared, yes. So you can see, you put, oops, it's this. Make sure this thing remains here the power supply okay good then for uh, access control i mean access point just click on the access point also and you drag the power supply and place it there's a port here just place it there and you have to, you have to make sure that the power supply remains here the power adapter and now for a tablet they will pick IP address dynamically smartphone they will pick IP address dynamically now for the laptop click on the laptop and you have to make sure you you have to know that uh, the laptops in packages uh, they do not have what's called a Wi-Fi card. So just turn it off. Just click on this thing, click on that. Then remove this module, this one. Just drag it and put it here. So you can see we have an empty module here. That was an Ethernet module. So let's drag an, a wireless module. This one WPC Terran, okay, and put it there. Then turn on the laptop again. And close so what we're gonna do what we're gonna do is just to copy paste this to every department okay so what to do just copy paste to every department so you just I let all of them like that one and you copy and paste after pasting like while they are highlighted you just drag and put it somewhere here 
and that continues until you place all. Okay, guys, so I managed to uh, copy paste all the devices. So if I can try to zoom out, you can see all the devices are in their respective department. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is just connect the end devices to the switches. Okay, all right. So I'll do that very, very fast. Save time, I'm just going to reset, click on the reset. Yes, so I'm just going to do it very, very fast. And uh, guys, here you can remember that we have uh, what's called um, wireless uh, users, LAN users, and VoIP. So each port should accommodate both wireless or LAN plus VoIP. So which port should be either LAN plus LAN plus VoIP or WLAN plus VoIP, okay? So for access points, actually, I want them to connect from port, uh, from port 20, let's say from port 21, okay? Such that from port, uh, from port three, from port three of every access switch is connected to other, for it's for men, it's meant for LAN VLAN, wired people, wired, uh, I mean users, wired users, okay? You can see this port uh, FF0 slash 1 and the other one is FF0 slash 2. So from FF0 slash 3 to 20 is for LAN. Then let's say from FF0 slash 21 to 24, that's where we connect our access points. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to choose uh, copper straight through and connect this and choose port 21 and connect to the access point. So I do that for all other switches. Okay, so what we've, what we've done is that we've ensured that from port, we connect access points only from port 21 to 24. But from port 3 to 20 is for LAN users. Because for port, from port 1 to port, I mean from port 21 to port 24, we want to designate to uh, wireless VLAN, okay? All right, so for the other remaining one, we just connect them randomly, okay? So when you choose automatic, it will choose the, the immediate free port. Okay, so what I've done is just to include another computer, as you can see. So we have two computers, a printer and other devices. Okay, so all right. So what's remaining is just naming. I'll just go ahead and name them very, very fast every time. Okay, so uh, we've done the naming, so we can just separate the borders in terms of fifth, 35th floor, 6th, 36th, and 37th floors, and, and name all the departments that we had, okay? All right.
okay so i've done uh, the naming and uh, separating the boundaries as you can see now uh, the diagram looks a little bit uh, um, presentable okay so all the naming i've done but there's one thing that i forgot so there's just one thing that i forgot remember we want to implement uh, either channel between uh, the two switches the core switches okay so for us to implement the other channel at least we should have two or more connection running between the switches so for that connection we're just going to use a normal straight through cable and i'm going to use i'm going to use from port let's say from port 21 also on this side from port 21 let's say i want to run three physical cables there all right so basically i've i did run four physical cables between the core switch one and the core switch two so as to implement lsp which is a either channel protocol okay all right so uh, let me just check on the diagram so that we can see whatever i've left out and we implement it immediately all right so another thing, another correction that I would like to make on this diagram, remember, we were told somewhere here that I just want, you know, as a network engineer, I should have a recommendation. Okay. So my recommendation here is that, where is the one router? Yes, this one. Network routing. A Cisco one router has been deployed to facilitate efficient data routing within the network node for some reason the router will be used for VoIP services guys i don't want to use this router for VoIP services and that's why i have i have to include another router and for that router i'll put i'll just put it here so that it has redundancy okay i don't want you know in the in the description we bet, we've been told that for some reason this router should act as uh, to provide telephony service, but I don't want that to happen here, okay? Because I want this router to fully uh, concerned about aggregating traffic from the core uh, from the distribution layer and forward it all to the firewall. I don't want to be concerned about uh, VoIP traffic. And that's why I need to include another router. So to do that. Just click on the networking devices and on the router, choose another router, which is just similar as this and put it under this small LAN that we include here. Okay. I'll just say that is um, VoIP router. And I connect to the last port, which is port 24, and I'll make port 24 as trunk. Okay. Just hit enter. Then I named this uh, department as, uh, let's just say, um, controllers. So let me see again the recommendation that we can make on this diagram. Okay, it's pretty fine now. So you can see 35th floor, 36th, 37th, and the departments listed here, okay? All right. So, uh -huh. so I'll just go back to our note part and uh, I let the steps that we're going to follow to implement this topology here okay so these are always our config guides these are always our config guides I wrote the config guide but I didn't show you uh, during the start so we've already covered part one which is network design and beautification so we are going ahead to do part uh, the second part, which is basic settings to all devices. Okay, all right. So without any further ado, let's proceed to the next step. Okay, so uh, for the basic settings, we're going to uh, start with the switches. 
then we move up to the multi-layer switches, then to the routers, and we are not going to touch the firewall as per now. Okay, and we're not going to do any basic settings on the ISP or the cloud devices. We're only concerned with our properties. Okay, so for the firewall, I don't want to touch firewall as per now. And um, the reason why I'm doing this is to uh, uh, enable us to understand firewall configuration step by step and consistently. Okay. I don't want to configure firewall bit by bit. Okay, I will just want to start it uh, and finish it once and for all. Okay, all right. So let's start with the the access layer switches. So as our culture, we normally demonstrate with configuring one device, then we write commands on Notepad and copy on all other remaining devices. Okay, all right. So among the basic settings that we are required to configure here, you can see. Uh, it's um, uh, host names, host names, console passwords, enable password, banner messages, password encryption, and disabling IP domain lookup. Okay, all right. So let's do that very very fast to save time. And we are also going to hard SSH uh, during basic settings configuration. Right? Okay. So let's start with any switch. Let's say um, the medical labs or the pharmacy department switch. Just click on it. And then you come to uh, CLI. And um, just say enable. Then config T. All right. Then we start with host name. Host name, how do we configure host name? Just say host name. Host name, let's say uh, this is pharmacy. Farm. Farm med switch switch one okay pharmacy plus med medical lab switch and you hit enter and then we do banner message how do we do we just say banner m o t d and uh, we put any characters two characters then we come back inside the characters then we say um, unauthorized is punishable unauthorized access is punishable then we just hit enter sorry it's banner motd not bunny then you just hit enter just hit enter yes then another thing that we do now we just write enable password enable password to be uh let's say you cisco everything okay all right then another thing, LAN console, LAN console password, LAN console zero. Okay. Uh -huh. Then we say password to be, let's say, use Cisco. And then we log in. Okay. And exit. Exit. Then we configure username and password. Okay. Uh huh. Let's do that while configuring SSH. So another thing that we're going to configure here: uh, console enable password banner messages, password encryption, and disabling a P domain lookup. So let's disable a P domain lookup. How do we do? We just say no IP domain lookup, and we hit enter. Then service password encryption to uh, encrypt all the passwords that are configured here. Okay. All right. So let's get into SSH part. For, for SSH, the first thing that you have to make, ensure that you've configured uh, the host name, okay? Such that doesn't have the default host name. Then enable password is very, very important, okay? Okay, so the next thing that is also uh, important is add a domain name, okay? So we have to ensure that this, this switch is, is e under a domain name. So we just say IP domain name to be we can just say gtech.com okay and we hit enter our domain name we configure username and password just say username to be i just want to use cisco all in lowercase cisco username cisco password to be cisco okay and we hit enter 
then uh, after this now we generate crypto key we just say crypto key generate rsa uh -huh. then you just try to query okay general keys then you query modulus then you query length now so crypto key generate rsa general keys modulus we want a length of 1024 okay and hit enter All right okay then now you configure ssh ip ssh version 2 because there are two versions of ssh configure version 1 and version 2 okay all right so we just hit enter and do right so we are done the basic configuration on the on the farm pharmacy or medical lab switch okay all right so for other remaining switches guys as we said you're going to write commands on a notepad and copy to all other remaining switches and devices in the network okay so let's start all right so i just open uh, our notepad here so the first command that we normally write is enable then we write config t okay then we configure host name host name to be let's say this is reception so we just say recept recept guest uh guest switch one okay so that that will be the name of this switch okay except guest uh except except guest switch one okay all right then banner message banner m banner motd then you write any character the character that you like okay then inside the inside the character you can just write your message now unauthorized access is punishable all right then you can just indicate with the exclamation all right okay then enable password enable password to be cisco okay then we enter line console just say line console zero indicate password to be password to be cisco we just want to use cisco as everything then log in authenticate the user okay then exit the line console good all right the next thing that we do now is um is configuring let me check on the other switch It's disabling a pedo main lookup service person encryption and we enter a search configuration so i do it very very fast first so for example <coughs> so let's disable a pedo main lookup just say no ip domain lookup one word okay then service password encryption encryption then you have to make sure that you are uh, you are writing a correct word because uh, these commands are case sensitive all right okay service password encryption good then now let's enter our uh, ssh configuration the first command that you should should always ensure that uh, you do when you're configuring ssh is the host name the second one is enable password the third one now is domain ip domain name just say ip domain name to be let's say gtech.com okay then after uh writing ip domain domain name now you give the username and password so you just say username to be cisco password to be cisco okay all right then now out of this one we generate crypto keys so um i'm just going to copy the keys that i uh, mean the command that we used here where is it it's somewhere here yes so this is the command that i'm going to crypto key generate rsa modulus length 
10.24. So uh, we, we paste it there. After pasting it there, now we um, enable SSH version 2. Just say IP SSH version 2. Then do write and do it enter. And that's all about the basic setting configuration on the device. So what I'm going to do, I'm only going to change the host name and copy paste everything, all the remaining devices in the network, except from here going this side because we don't manage, we don't, we don't own them, okay? We only own from the firewall going down, okay? All right, but on the firewall, as I've said, we're going to tackle firewall later. I just want to start uh, conferring firewall from scratch until completion, not bit by bit. All right, so uh, we just go down and uh, I copy all these commands. Okay, so I've done the basic settings on all the devices except the firewall and the device that uh, the company do, do, does not own. Okay, all right. Uh, so basically, uh, what we're going to do next, let's check on the config guide. So the second step is to configure VLANs and assign ports the roles of access and chunk okay all right so we're going to configure how many villains we're going to create how many villains wired wireless and voice all right and also we're going to include this part right okay spot first and bpu guard on all the access ports so the two points will go together right okay so let's do it on one device Write commands on notepad and copy paste to all other remaining access switches. Good. So let's start with the first switch, which is uh, medical labs and pharmacy. So before we can configure VLANs and assign ports, VLAN IDs, all the roles of access and trunks, we must first identify which ports are we having interest with. So, for example, on this switch, any port that connects to the multi-layer switch should be trunk. So, as you can see, f resolution 1 and 2 connects to the multi-layer switch. Those ports should be trunks. And I was making my design very consistent. f resolution 1 and 2 in all the access switches should connect to the multi-layer switch. And therefore, there will be trunk. Okay, all right, so let's go just go to this switch, and you remember clearly that on every multi-layer switch, we were trying to configure in a such in a way such that from port one and port two should be track, then from port three to port twenty should access wired VLAN. Then from port 21 to port 24 are where we connect our access ports, access points, okay? All right, so let's do it very, very fast in time. So I just click on, on the switch and um, I don't want to put password, so I just come on back and click on that. All right. So let's identify FA1 and FA2 should be track. So we just say interface FA1 to 2. Interface range. Then switch port mod trunk and you eat it. And we exit the range. Okay? Then we enter into another range of FA0 slash 3 to 20. 3, 2, 1, 2, 
20 okay and before we enter the range let's create the three villains so just say villain uh, we had how many villains three villains and you could you could uh, remember that we had villain 10 50 and 99 okay all right so villain 10 we name as learn exit then we learn we, we had villain 50 we name as w learn we learn exit then finally we'll add villa 99 we name as we name as voice good and exit now we can enter the range of interface range fa0 slash 3 to 20 because we say that fa0 slash 3 to 20 will be connected to LAN ports so the whoever wants to connect to wall will be in which VLAN? VLAN 10 any wireless user will be in VLAN 50 okay and all the access points will be connected from port 21 to 24 okay all right so just hit enter so just a switch port mode access switch port mode access then we hit enter and remember the LAN ports uh, we want them to access both the da both data and voice VLAN okay so let's let it access uh, let the range access uh, data VLAN so just a switch port, switch port uh, access VLAN 10 okay for data okay remember VLAN 10 was meant for LAN so LAN is part of data VLAN okay all right so let's it let it let it access voice now switch port voice vlan 99 and hit enter exit and do right okay all right so let's go back to uh the configured and see what's remaining yes we, co we we've configured how many uh, we've configured how many uh villains three villains but we've not uh, we've not assigned from port 21 to 24 uh, VLAN ID. So let's just do it very, very fast. So interface range from 21, where the access points are connecting. Just say switch port, mode, access. Okay, then switch port, access, VLAN, VLAN 50. Okay, and we hit enter, exit, good. Then another thing that I was forgetting was all about port fast and BPD good on all the access ports. So the importance of um, BPD good and port fast is that uh, it uh, expedites the transitioning state state from blocking to forwarding. So for example, let me just try to connect this computer here. So this is what we don't want because this computer will take at least from 30 to 45 seconds between this port turns green. So that's this is what we don't want. So let's just configure what's called BPDU guard and port fast. Okay. All right. So we just enter the range in on all the access ports. Okay. So from access ports start from port 3 to 24. Okay. And you hit enter. And you just say spanning tree, spanning tree, as query, spanning tree port fast, spanning tree port, port fast, and you hit enter. Then spanning tree, uh, BPDU guard enable, and you hit enter, and exit, and do right. And if I can just say do show start, you can see the ports. They have port first and BPD enabled, and they have uh, VLANs. Okay, all right. So if you can just try again and disconnect this this PC and connect to the any port, it should it should turn green immediately. You see, that's what we wanted actually. 
So let's do the same. Let's do the same. Let's do the same. This is the two, the two points. Villains plus villains plus STP portfolios and BPD on all the switches. Okay. All right. So the first thing we do, the first thing we do, let's create the villains. Villain ten, and we name it. Uh, let's name it. Um, it is land. Villain fifty. We name it or villain. Then we have villain villain ninety nine. Name it voice. Good. And then, as we say that the two ports, which is a phase resource one and two, should be trunk always so we just say interface range fa0 slash one to two switch port switch port mod trunk okay all right then you exit the interfaces okay then as 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 as, as the consist as we did it consistently we said that interface range from 3 to 20 from 3 to 20 3 to 20 okay switch port mode access switch port mode access make sure that you write it correctly okay then switch port access vlan 10 for data vlan 10 was meant for lan vlan lan vlan okay then we also want it to access a voice VLAN 99 for voice VLAN, okay? Then exit the range, okay? Now let's enter, let's enter which range? Uh -huh. From 21 to 24. So from 21, 21 to 24, okay? All right. So, uh huh, uh, switch port mode access, then access VLAN 50 now. Remember, this is this, it's will, I mean, the access point should be connected to VLAN 50. Okay, all right, oh, good. Then exit. Then another important thing is port first. So, port first should be applied on all the ports. So we just say spanning tree, spanning tree, then port first. Okay, then spanning, spanning tree, BPDU guard enable, exit, and do right. So this configuration, we're going to apply them on. The remaining five switches okay but when we reach this one we are going to make some modification okay all right so uh let me just counter check if you've done it right vlan 10 that one okay okay all right okay okay if all right so i've done um, VLAN configuration, port first and BP regard on all the departmental switches. Okay, all right. So let's move up and go back to this to this topology here. To this LAN, I mean here. So on this LAN, guys, basically, uh, we say that you see this access switch. I mean this wireless LAN controller. Connects to which part of the switch? It connects to FA0 slash 3. So that port should be in the same VLAN with the access ports, access points, sorry. So each access point, you can see it connects to port 21 of every switch. So port 21 to port 24 belongs to VLAN 50. So this access, this wireless LAN controller connects to FA0 slash 3. So FA0 slash 3 should be in VLAN 50. Okay. This is 
This is VoIP router. This port should be trunk plus this one and this one. Okay, FS router 1 and 2 plus plus that 24 should be trunk. Uh, then this one we can just put it under, uh, we can just put it under LAN VLAN. Okay, where the users. Okay, all right. Then uh, we can also include another access point there. Let me just include another access point. Let's say that's a controller room and some users want to connect. Uh, let's say a network admin wants to connect via. I uh, wants to connect via wireless. Okay. All right. So this one will connect to port, let's say 21. Okay. All right. So uh -huh. what I'll do, let's do, I just drag the power supply and put it there. All right. So let's go to this switch here. We have said that this will be VLAN 50 because all the access points belong to VLAN 50. This one and this one. So uh, to make the matters uh, look fine, then I think this one and this one should belong to the same VLAN. So I'm just going to unplug it from port 3 and put it here and make it to port 22, okay? So from 21 and 22 will belong to VLAN 50. So I've just removed this one here, I remove that one there and put it to port 3 such that port 1, port 2 and port 3 are trunks, okay? All right. So this will be port uh, port four. So port four will just be um, hmm, will just be a normal uh, LAN port. Okay. So when I go back to our notepad here, remember we wrote some some uh, commands here. But when you reach here on the controller side, we have to modify some. For example, we said that the three ports will be track. The one that connects to the uh, VoIP router and the one that connects to the multi layer switches. So it's from one, two, and three. From one to three. Sorry. From one to three. Good. So from one to three will be trunk. Okay. All right. So uh, so from four. Let me just check on this. Four yes. So from four to twenty. Four now. Sorry. Four to twenty should be in wired users. Should be wired use users. Okay. All right. Switch port mode access VLAN ten. Then voice VLAN ninety nine. No problem there. Then we want a range from twenty one to twenty four for for wireless users. Okay. All right. Then port first. No port first will start from port four now because remember port three is involved under trunk and we don't configure port first on a trunk interface. Okay, all right. So that's the only modification that we can make there. Uh, if not, I'll just uh, copy paste uh, in all copy and you come here. And we just paste there. Good. All right. Okay, so we're done on all the access switches that we can do because uh, we've we're not going to do on this access switch, okay? We're not going to configure any VLAN as per now on this switch, okay? Maybe we'll do VLANs on a DMZ switch later in the coming projects, but as per now, I'm not going to touch this switch to configure VLANs, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do, because I've configured VLANs uh, and all the necessary uh, portals in terms of access and trunks, I'm going now to the multi-layer switches, okay? All right, so when you go under uh, the config guide, guys, you can see we're going to do uh, what's called only, v we're going to create VLANs and uh, only assign ports roles of uh, trunk because uh, we don't want access port here, okay? We're only going to have a layer 3 port which is connecting to the routers. 
So this port is going to be layer 3 interface, okay? This one and this one. They're going to be layer 3 interfaces and we will send them IP addresses, okay? But the remaining one will be trunk, okay? So for example, we say that this is uh, the links connecting switch to the match layer switches are from FA gig, I mean gig 1 slash 0 slash 21 to, to 24, okay? All right, so we're going to configure either channel there, okay? All right, so as you can see here, we, for, for, for the match layer switch, I'm going to combine either channel plus number two, okay, plus VLANs and trunks, okay. All right, so let's just do it very, very fast, save time. So mm -hmm. I just click on this smart layer switch and see which ports are connecting to the access layer switches first, okay. So you can see the first port, which is gig this one, you can see it's down, okay. So we don't, we don't do that one, right? Okay, and another thing, the port that is connecting this switch to this switch, I mean the, the two switches are from 21 to 24, okay? So if I hover over it, you can see from gig 102 to gig 108 are the one that connects to the access switches. So what I'm going to do, just click on the match layer switch. So interface range, gig 1 slash 0 slash 2 to 8, okay, switch port mode, trunk, and you hit enter, you exit, all right, all right, okay, then another thing guys, being that we have how many villains in our network, three villains, LAN, VLAN, and voice, so we have to create the three villains on each match layer switch, okay, all right, so let's just do the three villains here, VLAN 10. All right, so I've done the VLANs plus trunk, okay? So what is remaining basically is to configure either channel. And we want how many links to part participate in the either channel formation? Four links from gig 1021 to gig 1024 because they connect directly to the other code layer, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to indicate that we are going to configure either channel here. All right, so I've indicated that here we're going to configure LSP Ether channel, okay? All right, so just go here, back here, being that we've configured trunk and uh, configured VLANs, but we don't assign ports VLANs on the match layer switches. We just create the VLANs, okay? All right. So let's do either channel. So either channel is going to apply through which interface? Interface range gig 1 slash 0 slash 21 to 24. Okay. All right. And then uh, we'll send in a channel group. Just say channel group. Channel group. Let's say channel group 1. Mod to be LSP uses uh, which, 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 which mods? Uh huh. Active passive so on this side we can just create active and on the other side we do passive or we just do active active and we just hit enter then you exit then now you enter this interface for channel one okay so we just say uh, interface port channel one then switch port mode to be trunk and you hit enter, exit, and do right. So we're done on that switch. So let's go on the other switch and do the same. So when you go back to this other switch, the first thing we do, we create trunk, trunk interfaces. As we say that, exit, a switch that any port connecting to the, to the access switches should be, should be trunk. And say interface, Interface range gig gig one slash zero slash two to eight. Okay, then switch port mod to be trunk. Okay, it enter exit. Then we create the three VLANs very very fast. All right. So after creating the three VLANs, now is the time to complete the either channel formation between 
the code switch one and the code switch two, okay? Okay, so we just enter that range, which was interface range, interface range, gig uh, one slash zero slash 21 to 24, okay? Then it enter. We just say channel group, channel group one, because you know, we are forming the channel between this switch and this switch, okay? So the channel group should be one, okay? When it's one on this side, it should be one on this side, okay? Because we want to form one thing. So the channel group should match. If it doesn't match, it won't form, okay? All right. So channel group one, then mod to be, we can make this side to be active or passive. So we just say mod to be active still active then you just hit enter okay then exit the range the end enter port channel 11 port channel 1 okay so you can just copy even this one like that one and uh, you just paste here interface port channel 1 then you say quick port mod to be turn and you hit enter exit and do right all right so we're done with the either channel formation and uh, VLANs creation plus portals in terms of uh, trunks and access ports. All right, so let's go back to our notepad and see what's next. All right, so uh, the fourth, the fourth um, item here is all about subnetting and IP addressing. So guys, you know, we had several uses and uh, the company anticipate that by 2020, you know, the number will double, okay? So our addressing scheme should accommodate such scalability. And uh, actually in this network, guys, so we're not going to do it as per departments, let's say uh, this public department belongs to this network, no. We're categorizing uh, this network in terms of, um, um, such uh, groups, users group, okay? We categorize, we categorize this network based on users group. Group number one, wireless users. Group number two, wired users. Group number three, IP phones. So that's how we're going to do our addressing scheme. And you remember clearly that here, uh, we were given some uh, addresses here to use. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll just open uh, uh, the word here and uh, let you know that these are the addresses that you want to use. So for VLAN or the Wi Fi users, this is the network. For the LAN, the wired users, this is the network. For all the IP phones, uh, we're going to use this network. Okay. And uh, also all the. Um, all the DMZ, we're going to use this network. All right. Okay. So I think this one should be 20, actually. Yes. All right. So, uh, and between the cloud ISP firewall routers and monthly switches, these are the ranges that we're going to use. It's very, very simple. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to indicate on the diagram that for wireless, this network, LAN, this network, VoIP, this network, DMZ, that network, and uh, also between the core devices in the network. So let me just do that change very, very fast of time. Okay, guys, so uh, basically I've done the comments uh, based on the IP addressing schemes that we want to use. So uh, what's remaining here in terms of uh, uh, IP addressing scheme, it just uh, allocate IP addresses to various interfaces, okay? All right, so um, we'll start with the multi-layer switch. We'll start with the multi-layer switch. 
So we're going to uh, allocate IP address to this interface. This one, and also this one, okay? So we just click on the multi switch. And interface gig one slash zero slash one. Then remember, we cannot assign uh, that port an IP address because it's still a switch port. So we have to turn it into a layer three interface. So we just say no switch port and you hit end. Okay. And now we can assign an IP address. Just say IP add to be uh, 10 dot 30 dot uh, 10 dot 30 dot 10 dot 10 dot so uh, this is slash 30 notation meaning we have only dot 5 and dot 6 you say by p addresses okay so i'll let this side take dot uh, dot 5 actually so that on the router side it takes dot 6 and that will happen also on this side this side will take dot 9 dot 10 okay so we just do it very very fast so Okay, so I've done IP addressing on the on the on the one router. Okay, all right. So let's do the same on uh, the SP router and the cloud router. Okay, all right. So as we said earlier, that we are not going to touch firewall as per now. Okay, all right. So uh, let's just do uh, IP addressing here. So we have to make sure that. This interface of the firewall will take 10, 30, 10, 1, okay? This interface will take uh, 10, 20, 10, 1. This interface will take 197, 200, 100.2, okay? Such that ISP, ISP takes the first available IP address, okay? So this interface is gig 000. So I just go here. Okay, so I've done IP addressing both even uh, the ITEL, ATEL, and AWS cloud routers. So what I'm going to do is allocate ad IP addresses to uh, the devices, maybe uh, maybe the AWS cloud resources plus the demilitarized zone. Uh, servers okay so for example let me just do it very very fast all right so i think we've done allocating a period to even the server server farm the demilitarized zone devices so I'll just explain this a little bit. So although we didn't configure IP address on the firewall, but you can see being that these devices, these DMZ devices are connected to the switch that connects to the firewall. So that interface of the firewall, this interface of the firewall will act as a default gateway for these devices. So I've not configured any IP address on the firewall, but I have indicated that I will configure that interface as 10, 20, 10, 1, okay? So the subnet mask remains the same, okay? Then DNS server should be our primary ESXi server, okay? This is where we're going to install our Active Directory, okay? All right, so that's very simple. All right, so uh, another thing that is remaining here, let me check. Okay, so uh, I think we've done IP addressing except on the firewall of which i said we're going to start configuring uh 
from scratch then we finish everything not bit by bit okay all right so that's so as to uh avoid confusion because if you mess something on the firewall your, top, your topology will be useless okay all right good so another thing that i want us to check on is um let me go back to our notepad is hsrp and intervular routing on the multi-layer switches all right so guys like i said that this video is very important this project is very important we're going to uh, implement i availability protocol hsrp okay alongside intervening routing okay remember we have how many villains three villains we had vlan lan and voip vlans okay so we have to implement intervillian routing so that these devices communicate even outside okay and also incorporate what's called hsrp mm -hmm. such that uh, we load balance what passes through the two switches all right so what i'm going to do is just to um, uh, give some comment about hsrp so for example let's say this our um, active uh, let's say this is our active switch All right, so uh, guys, basically what I've done, I have uh, included some comments here. So this will be our active router. This will be our standby router. And we, had, we have a virtual router that we don't see, okay? Okay, so the traffic will go through the active router. When the active router fails, all it feels overwhelmed, the traffic will go via the standby route. So, why did I include uh, VLAN 10, VLAN 50, VLAN 99 IP addresses here? So, we're going to create what's called SV highs. That's why I have combined HSRP plus intervillian routing because we're going to implement HSRP during intervillian routing configuration. And it's very, very important that we, uh, we understand this part because if you don't understand this, if you don't understand this part, it's not gonna work okay all right so let's start hsrp plus intervening routing very very important so i just click on this switch and let you know how to configure hsrp plus intervening routing which is a very very important part in this video exit so we create svi so we create an svi so we just say interface vlan 10 okay for vlan and we just hit enter. Then we send it IP address. IP add. Okay. So this this SV high on this switch, we are sending this IP address, which is uh the IP address is 10.10.0.3. And separate mask, you can remember it's 255.255.0.0. And we hit enter. Okay. Old. Then we give it what's called um, IP helper address. We tell it that whenever you receive any request for a uh, DSCP IP allocation, please forward that request to our DSCP server. Our DSCP server will be inside this host, okay? This ESXi host, okay? All right. So it should forward that request to this IP address. So we just say IP helper address. IP helper address to be 10.20.10.10. .10 yes, the IP address of that host. Yes, it's that one. And you just hit enter. Good. So let's enter uh, HSRP configuration. Being that, being that our VLAN 10 here has this IP address. Okay. So when we're configuring uh, HSRP, you should give a priority and a standby IP address. So we just say standby. Uh, sorry. Standby. Just inside the interface VLAN 10. Inside this SVI, okay? Still. Then uh, we give it a prior, I mean, standby number. Group. We should give it a group. 
So being that this is a um, VLAN 10, let's just give it a group 10, standby 10, then priority, give it a priority. Priority, we want it to be uh, our, our um, let's say we, we want it to be our active router. So we give we can give it uh, the the highest priority, okay. So for example, priority one fifty, and we just hit enter, okay. Then state you have to state here the standby IP address, the IP address of the virtual router, okay. So just stay standby standby ten state the group is ten IP to be IP address of the, the virtual route, which was 1010 .1. Okay? All right. So we just hit enter and exit. We go to interface VLAN 50. Okay? Then you assign the IP address. So uh, interface VLAN, VLAN 15, we assign it IP address. Remember the IP address was uh, slash 20. Slash 20 is equivalent to 255.255.240.0, okay? Then you give IP helper address. Then now we begin uh, HSRP configuration. We just say standby, 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 being that it's now VLAN 50, you can just say it's in group 50, okay? Standby by 50, priority to be, priority to be 150 still. Let's give them priority of 150, okay? Then standby, standby 50 still, IP to be the IP address of the virtual router area, which is 192.168.0.1. Then we proceed to VLAN 99. So we just say uh, interface uh, VLAN 99. Then IP add, IP address to be 172.168.0.3. Okay. 255.255.240 because of uh, slash 20 notation. Yes, this should be that one. Okay. Then IP helper address. Just paste IP helper address. Okay. All right. And then um, you start standby, standby, standby group 99 now. Uh, priority. Priority to be, we could put it on 50. Then standby. Standby group 99. IP to be the IP address of the virtual router here. The virtual router, which is 172.16.01. Okay. All right. So it's very, very simple, guys. Don't miss this part. Uh -huh. 172.16.0.1. So, can see I have made, uh, I made an error here. This IP should not be this way. It should be. 172.16, not 168, okay? So let me just correct it very, very fast. I'm glad I have uh, realized that error before we move ahead. Okay, so we go back to standby. Sorry. So we go back to standby. Standby, that one, priority 150. Then standby IP to be that one, good and exit and do that so guys we are going back to this switch the same thing that we've done on this side we're going to do on this side but now let me demonstrate with only one svi and for the two svis i'm going to do it very very fast save time so on the on the second switch here on the second switch now
you enter an SVI interface VLAN 10. Sorry, there's no VLAN 20. Interface VLAN 10. Okay. Then you are sending the IP address. You just say IP add to be 10.10.0.2 now. The way I've done the comment here. Then subnet mask dot zero dot zero and you hit enter. Then IP helper address is very very important. Just hit enter. Then now we enter into HSRP configuration. We just say standby. Standby. Remember this in this is uh VLAN 10. So we made VLAN 10 on this side to be in a HSRP standby group of 10. So it should match. So we just say standby 10 uh, priority priority to be we can just say even 110 okay because on the other side it was 150 we want it to be our active router okay standby priority 110 okay then another thing standby uh 10 ip ip to be the ip address of the virtual router 10 10 0, 1. exit so that's the thing that we do for the remaining svi4 svi50 and svi99 so i do that very very fast save time okay so guys i've done uh, HSRP plus intervillian routing on the multi layer switches. So, uh, basically, what I'm just waiting is just uh, the last HSRP uh, group to form so that I can test it. Okay, so you can see it as form. So, if you can just say and show HSRP. Show standby, standby query, standby brief. Okay, so let me just expand and explain a little bit. So you can see the priority is 110, the priority is 110, priority is 110, state is standby. All of them are standby. Then it's telling us that the active router is having this IP address, this IP address, this IP address, and the standby state is local. Okay. All right. So the virtual IP addresses you can see they are here. And if you can go back to this router here, this might layer switch here, and uh, just say show standby brief. Good. It's telling you that uh, we had a group of 10, 50, and 99, and priority of 150. You can remember. The state is active, active router, active router. Active state is the local. Standby is telling you the IP address of the other SVI on the other multi layer switch. Virtual router remain the same. Okay, good. So our HSRP has been formed successfully. Okay, all right. So uh, the next thing that we're gonna do, the next thing that we should do. Let just ju let's just go back to our uh, notepad so that we see what's next. So on our notepad, we are supposed to set static IP address to the DMZ, DMZ or server farm devices. Guys, I think I did that in the last IP addressing scheme. I think I've already set IP address to these devices, and you can see all of them. They have IP addresses, okay. All right. So let's go to the second, uh, the the next point, number seven, DCP server device configuration. Good. Good. So we are going to do DCP server device configuration on um, on the on this ESXi host, the primary ESXi. You go to services, and you come to DCP. And the thing, the first thing that you do, just turn everything to zero, zero, zero. And you save. 
Okay, so when they are 000, zero, zero and is saved, then turn on the service. After turning on the service, you start modifying pools. So let's pre uh, um, create a pool. We're going to create only two pools, one for wireless, one for LAN, because for VoIP is from the other VoIP route, okay? So just say this here, uh, Wi-Fi pool or WLAN, okay? WLAN pool. So the gateway of VLAN pool, you can remember, it was a virtual router, and it had a PDS of 10.10.0.1, okay? The DNS, we want this primary ESXi to be our DNS still. We want it to be our DNS server, okay? So we just say the DNS server is 10.10, not 20.10.10, yes, okay? Then we want this DSCP pool to start giving IP address from 10, 10, 0 dot, uh, let's say, uh, even 100. Good. Then the subnet mask, you can remember it was 255, 255, 0 dot 0, okay? Then the maximum number of users that we want here, uh, actually we want, uh, let's say we want, um, Every 64,000 users, 60, 64,000 users, and you try to add now, you don't say you add, okay? Good. So, another thing that I want to explain concerning, uh, the, remember this is a WLAN pool, and the WLAN pool is the one responsible for providing uh, IP address to Wi-Fi users, and for Wi-Fi users, they connect to access points. And for access points, they are controlled via the wireless LAN controller. So, while creating a Wi-Fi pool, the, the WLAN pool, then you should incorporate the IP address of the wireless LAN controller here. Okay? Here. So let's assume, although I didn't configure IP address on this wireless LAN controller, but we can just do it right now. We just click on the wireless con LAN controller, config, and um, you go to management. And you configure IP address here. So we have to make it to have the same, uh, to be in the same subnet, okay? All right. So we can give it 10.10.0.7.50, okay? Then you can remember clearly that uh, subnet pass was uh, a class B, okay? Then the default gateway should be the IP address of the virtual route. DNS, IP address of uh, the EXI host, 10.20.10.10, .10 okay? Good. So we have assigned IP address on the wireless LAN controller and you can see it's 10 10 0, 50. so that IP address is the one that we're going to use here to tell this pool that you have been uh, integrated with the wheel uh, wireless LAN controller address of 10.10.0.50 and you just save okay so if you click on the one pool this IP address should be here. And that IP address should be the IP address of the wireless LAN controller. And the wireless LAN control, controller should be in the same network uh, as the WLAN addressing scheme, okay? Good. Then we create another pool again, the last pool now. We create another pool that's called LAN pool, LAN pool. So the LAN pool is having a period of uh, 192, the default gateway now. 168.0.1 okay the DNS server will remain the same then start, start IP address 192 168 0.1 that's okay okay then uh huh, certain mass you can remember it was 255 255.240 240.0 then we want to have the maximum number of IP address to be even 4000 Okay, maximum number of users. Here we don't have wireless LAN controller. 
for VLAN, for LAN, we don't have wireless LAN controller. We just add. Okay. All right. So we try to do that. You can just say this one should start by 101 and save. Also, this one should start from 101 and save. So we have two pools here. You can see all of them. And I believe you understand them. All right. So that's done. That's done. OSPF configuration on the firewall, routers, and switches. Good. All right. So we should do, actually, you should do SPF configuration here on the routers, switches, and the firewall. So let's start with the switches and the routers. And now we embark on firewall configuration. So we should start configuring, I mean, we should uh, start advertising connected networks here. So for example, on this switch, on this switch and this switch, we're going to advertise how many networks? Uh, I can say four actually, this one and the three here, this one and the three here. So let me just do them very, very fast save time. So we just say config t and uh, router OSPF we can just say uh huh we can just say even 25 and do hit enter then router ID to be let's let this one to be a one dot two dot one dot two okay another thing now we advertise the network network to be the first network we advertise this network, okay. Ten dot thirty dot zero dot four with the worker mask of zero dot zero dot zero dot three area zero. Another network that we advertise is um, is this network. So I do it very very fast. Another network is. 10.0.0.0 uh, with a wildcard mask of 0 .0 .255 yes area 0 another network is um network 192.168.0.0 with a wildcard mask of 0 .15 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.15.255 the wildcard mask of this IP this uh, the, this subnet mask slash 20 notation okay area 0 and it enter another one is uh, 4 so this one becomes 6 16 this one becomes 172 and it enter exit and do right do right do show start so i just want to do a little bit of modif i mean yes so these are what i want so ip i just copy it and i paste it somewhere on create a new notepad and paste it there so the reason why I did paste there is to configure this one. So I just modify from this point. I uh, just say this now. Uh, SPF, the process ID of 25. Now the router ID will become dot three, dot three. Okay. Then we don't need to include this. The network, the network here should now be dot eight, ten, ten, eight, ten, thirty, ten, eight, ten. 10 38 so i think we made an error we made a mistake here you can see it was 10 30 10 not 10 30 0 so i can just do this i copy and just say router a router OSPF 25 then I say no 
to that I say no yes then I paste what is right yes it should be now this one Yes, now it's okay. So uh, let's go back on, let's embark on this router also, the other router, this one. Okay. And this one you can see uh, it's connected via 103010.8. So this is here plus the, the, four, the three. So I just copy, being that you've changed the router ID to be different from this one. So we just paste here. And if you can just say do a show, you can say OSP, show IP OSPF neighbor. You can see the neighbors are forming for the uh, for the SVIs. Okay, uh, the neighbors are forming for the SVIs, and the state is full full. Okay, all right. So let's go on this one. To advertise how many networks, this one, this one, and this one. Very, very fast, save time. Or especially very, very easy. I've done it severally in my videos because in every video that I do, it's always OSPF. Okay, so that's done. We've done OSPF even on the uh, on the one router, and you can see it's forming adjacency with the below much layer switches. All right, all right, so that's done. So let's go on the ISP router. Remember, devices in packets are, they are not intelligent as the devices in the real net world network. So we shouldn't advertise, I mean, we should implement routing protocol on these devices, okay? So I have to implement routing protocol on in all these devices, even on the firewall, okay, because they are not intelligent as those devices we see physically, all right, okay, so let's just do a very, very fast save time, So I've run OSPF configuration on all the required devices except the file. Okay, so when you go back to our notepad here, so this is where we start on the firewall configuration. So let's start firewall configuration. So the thing, the first thing that we're going to do is the basic settings. So I just click on the firewall. And you just come to CLI, just say enable, then you will find a password. That password is always blank. That's the, just hit enter. Okay, and say config T. Then you configure host name, host name, host name to be, let's say this is our parameter firewall. Okay, then we can just say uh, we can configure what's called even um, what do we, what can we configure? We can configure domain name. We can just say domain name to be gtech.com and hit enter. Yes. Then we set security zones and levels. So to set security zones and levels, we have to see which interface this one. This is gig one one. So we just enter. So we just enter interface gig one slash one. Then no shut. Yes, it's now up. Then we set security zones, IP levels, etc. etc. We can give it an IP address. IP address. So IP address it should is it is a uh, 10.30.10.1 uh, 
10.1 with the separate mask of 255.255.255.252 and hit enter. Then you give it a name. Name if inside. This is an inside interface. Make it caps. Okay. Name if inside. Make it caps. Okay. And hit enter. Then you say security level. Just a security level to be 100. You fully trust your inside network. Okay. Exit. Then you go to the DMZ. This interface. So this interface you can see it's a gig one two. So I just go here and say interface gig one slash two. The first thing is no shot. Okay. Then we give it a peer this IP add. I peer this uh in, the IP address of the DMZ, you can see it's a 10.20.10.0.26. So we just say 10.20.10.1, okay? And then uh, IP address is 255.255.255.192, okay? Slash 26 notation. Just hit enter. Then name it to be DMZ. Okay, then security level to be we partially trust what is whatever is uh, on our DMZ, so we can just give it something like 70. Okay, all right, exit. Then let's go and configure this IP address, uh, this interface, which is um, this is um, gig one slash three. So interface gig one slash three no shot IP add to be IP add to be uh one ninety seven dot two hundred dot one hundred dot two because dot one was taken by the ISP ISP takes the first IP address okay two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two hit enter name if give it a name outside security level to be zero we don't trust anything from outside hit enter exit and do right so oh not to do right actually but write memory in firewall you say write memory not do right all right so Let's proceed with OSPF configuration. And like I said, on the firewall, all the devices and packages are, they're not intelligent enough to define routing for themselves, okay? So we have to implement routing protocol. So among the routing protocol that I'm going to implement on the firewall are static default routing and OSPF. Okay, all right. So let's start with OSPF. So we just say your router, router OSPF 25, then router ID, router ID to be, we can just say 1.7.1.8, something like that. Then networks. We have how many networks? Three networks, actually. So let's start with the one on the DMZ side 10, 20, 10, 0. 10.20.10.0 and then in the firewall we don't write the wildcard mask we just write the entire subnet mask 255.255.255.192 area 0 and it end another network is uh, another network is 10.30.10.0 uh, and the subnet mask of 255.255.255.252 area 0 and hit enter. Another network is uh, another is, another network is 197.200.100.0 okay 
255.255.255.252 area area 0 and hit enter exit and do right good oh right ma'am and finally now we do default static route how do we do default static route on a firewall we'll just say route route outside route outside route going outside okay route outside then we query route outside any ip address with any subnet mask okay then query and route outside this any ip address with any subnet mask should go to the isp router so the appearance of the isp router here is uh, 197.200.100.1 and hit enter and write them. okay so we are done with the routing protocols on the firewall the second thing that we do on the firewall now is firewall inspection policies so the first thing that we do we create what's called NAT we create object networks and apply NAT okay so it's very very simple we just say object we just say object 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 network I think so object network actually yes object network from we can say um uh -huh, object network for we have two group that you want to access internet actually that you want to be uh, they appear as to be a translated one is will actually three not uh, not two one is uh willan another one is uh lan then dmc so you can just say LAN to internet, object network of LAN to internet. We want to translate LAN IP address to a routable IP address on the internet. Okay, all right. Then we, we then we indicate the subnet that we want to use that uh, uh, that object network. We just say subnet. You can just say subnet uh, the LAN subnet. You can see it's a uh, LAN subnet is 192.168 and then dot uh, it's dot 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 zero dot zero with the separate mask 255.255.240.0 and hit enter okay at this one now you integrate now now you apply NAT you just say NAT to apply uh, you apply you just write bracket now then you say not to apply between inside inside comma outside interfaces okay then it should use dynamic dynamic interface and we hit enter exit so it's very very simple guys it's very very simple actually it's just a matter of understanding the simplest uh, simplicity of uh, creating object network know which subnet to apply and you apply the NAT now let's do object network for VLAN to internet so I'm just going to modify that and write mem good so we've created what's called uh, object network so if i can just say do show show start you will see these three object networks okay dmz to internet another one is LAN to internet and finally we learn to internet Okay, so uh, let's just do firewall policies so that um, the devices in, inside network can communicate with the devices both in the DMZ 
and the outside zones, okay? All right, so to create firewall policies, we are going to create access control list, a named and extended access control list, okay? All right, and uh, permit services that we want uh, the devices to access, okay? All right, so I'll just uh, config T. Config T, then we create an access control list. For example, access, access list, uh, let's say uh, inside to DMZ, okay? Then this access control list is an extended access control, just write extended, then permit. What services do you want to permit? For example, you know, the first service that we should always permit is ICMP, we just say ICMP. Permit which service ICMP from any subnet to any subnet, okay? And we just hit enter. Then another service that we want to permit is um, web port 80. So we just say port 80 is always uh, a TCP, TCP, any from any subnet to any subnet equals to port 80. Another subnet, um, another service that we want to permit is. Um, is uh, DSCP. DSCP utilizes two port numbers and both of the port numbers are UD UDP ports. So we just write access list inside DMZ permit UDP. UDP any from any subnet to any subnet uh, equals to port port of DSCP. DSCP utilizes two ports 57 and 58. Both of them are UDP ports. Okay. Then another service that is very, very important is DNS. Your DNS uses two services, TCP and UDP. So uh, so the first one, well, let's use UDP any, any equals to port 53 of DNS. Another one will be TCP. Yes, so we have, uh, we have allowed services that we want uh, the firewall to permit uh, between the zones. Uh, the first one is ICMP, which is pain. The second service is um, TCP for web services. Uh, the third and fourth services are UDP for DSCP. The fifth and sixth services, the um, uh, UDP and TCP for DNS. Very, very important. But the access control list remains the same, okay? We only alter the service, okay? Okay, so uh, what we want to do, what we want to do, being that we have um, specified the policies here, now is the time to put this policy into effect. Remember, it's still hanging policy, policy, I mean. It has not been put into effect. So we just uh, uh, apply it, it on an interface, a firewall interface, okay? And we're going to apply it on a DMZ interface. So we just say access, access group. Then we copy this, make sure uh, you do it correctly and uh, this is case sensitive. Then should get inside which interface? DMZ interface and you hit enter, okay? Okay, so now let's get another rule to allow inside host to access the AWS resources, okay? So uh, for that one, we're going to create another access control list, access list, inside, outside, okay? And then permit, extended first, extended, permit, uh, ICMP. ICMP, any, any, and it enter. Then another service that we want to access, maybe it's a web, okay? So we just say, uh, permit TCP. TCP, any, any, equals to port 8, and it enter. Okay? All right. So uh, let's put this policy into effect. We just say access group. Access group, uh, this one. And we press there, then we say it should get inside which interface? Uh huh, outside. 
yes and do right or the right memory okay so if you can just say uh huh if you can just say show start uh you will see the policy that we can just configured uh this one is for icmp this one is for web www then the two are for dscp 67 and 68 not 57 and 58 it's 67 and 68 actually sorry so i'll just copy that and uh, i go back to our notepad and remove the two is 67 and 68 not 57 and 58 actually sorry then i change that to 67 and 68 for dcp dcp utilizes udp port 67 and 68 so i just copy back and uh, i paste yes so right frame so i believe if i try to um, request ip addresses from any inside host it should be able to pick okay so let me just try and uh, you can see it uh, is already picked an ip address okay all right what about the access points uh huh so for example this one or you can see it has picked ip address what about this one it has picked ip address and this one all right okay so mm -hmm. but wait which ip is allocated to uh access points and which ip is allocated to uh, normal computers Remember, we said that WLAN should take 1010 dot something and LAN should take 10 192.168.0 dot something. Okay, so if I try to over over the IP, I mean the um, computers which is under LAN VLAN, you can see they have taken IP address of the that is um, that is meant for WLAN. And what about the access points? Oops, so guys, we are messed up. We have confused the two. We have put IP address of VLAN to LAN. And from VL, from IP address of LAN, we put to VLAN. So that error happened here. You see what's happening here. We said VLAN 10 is LAN. So this is where we confused everything. So let me just correct it and we do it very, very fast. okay so guys i'm sorry for that confusion i made that mistake but uh, although you can see the devices have been allocated ip address automatically meaning everything is just working fine uh, it's only confusion that we made here all the LAN should be having this ip address 192.168 dot uh, something okay but all the vlan wi-fi devices access point should be having ip address of 10 or 10 not 192 as i have stated here so the problem is here on the monthly switch okay the svhs okay and uh during hsrp formation so i'll just click on the two monthly switches and put them side by side okay so uh, when i go here do show start here and I want to see the SV highs. So that's where I confused everything. Good. So remember, VLAN 10 was supposed to be LAN, and the LAN should have a subnet of this one. So you see where we messed up. So all of these details should come here, and this one should come down here. That's what we're going to do actually. And also on this side, uh, do show start. We're not going to interfere with uh, VLAN 99 because um, we don't use it here, actually. Yes. So you can see the problem that we made, we interchanged the addresses. So this one should go here and that one should come down here. So what I do here, you just copy this one, like this one. And you copy all of this from the exclamation mark to the last exclamation mark we only did with the two villains villain 10 and villain 50. you copy and you open notepad 
troubleshooting skills as a network engineer very very important some guys we are learning how to troubleshoot networks uh, without uh, bringing everything down okay all right so we want to bring all of this up here okay so what do we do uh, what do we do we delete the mac addresses very very fast good then um we just uh say no to this no true first of all let me copy this let me copy that to here and i paste it there and i copy this copy and i paste it here okay all right then we say no to this and no to this no no to that then when we come up here we also say no to this so that it removes that uh confused command okay all right then no to that right okay so the correct one should be this one villain 50 is the la villain and it should have this okay villain 10 is lan it should have this 1 and 2 not 10 or 10 okay so we've removed 10 or 10 and replaced with this one so we're going to do the same on the other math layers switch so i just copy everything just copy everything and you just go to this switch and uh, you just paste very simple yes very very simple we just paste like that one and you see if uh, there's any error uh-huh overlaps i can see there's an overlap here so i'll just paste it again to see if there's any overlap so there's no overlap so just make sure you paste it two times okay all right so let's correct the error here i just copy from this exclamation this exclamation mark where is it uh-huh where is it this exclamation mark here to this exclamation mark and you just copy you go back to our notepad and you paste everything and the first thing you do remove the mac addresses okay and return whatever it's uh, on on the other side so i've copied this one because this one should be here above all right and this one which is up here this one which is up here should come down here so this one was not supposed to be there no just say no to everything yes and also this one was not supposed to come here no under interface villain 30 no to this so remember this one was uh conf was misplaced here so we've returned it under its direction okay also this one was misplaced here so we've returned it under its direction of and uh, we've deleted the old directory okay so we just copy and we come back to this code switch and paste it two times okay exit we just paste it uh two times good yes so we just give it some time so that it loads let's say do right do right do right also on the other side switch to be do right also here do right so after this one i want to go back to the access points and the computers to see if they are getting the right ip address remember this computer is uh is still having you can see it's still having the 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 old IP address of 10.10 or .10, and the computers should get a period of 192 or something so we just go back here and uh, come to static and DCP just give it some time if it will pick yes so all the computers should get this IP address okay all right so what about um, wireless access points uh-huh they're still not getting a period which is uh, okay so uh, what do we do we, sh we can just uh, go back to static and dscp and wait which sh they should get 10 or 10 good that's what we wanted guys so our troubleshooting skills 
is very high you can see that's what we wanted actually good so what's next what's next good so we want to connect the access i mean the wireless users remove this computer i want to access the network plus all other resources okay all right so we will need uh, to uh, implement uh, wireless LAN controller so our wireless LAN controller is here and you can remember we configured it with a address of 10.10.0.50 okay and uh, we want to access the wireless LAN controller from this PC this network security engineer PC so being that let's just uh, try to go to DSCP and try to request yes it should get 1.2.168.0 dot something okay good so let's the first thing before you can configure this thing this uh, wireless LAN controller try to ping it first all right so just try to ping it it's uh, 10.50 and it enter you can see it's pinging okay all right being that it's pinging being that the wireless LAN, LAN controller we can see the wireless LAN controller from the network security engineer PC good now we can just go here and continue configuring the wireless LAN controller okay very very simple and very very important so we just write a PRDS of wireless LAN controller uh, on the browser and hit enter then you have to give it some time you have to give it time because wireless LAN controller on the packet is as loads very very slowly you will wait even until two minutes but don't give up that's wait. yes so it has uh, it it has loaded so we can see it here so this is the welcoming page so it's telling us to create uh, an admin account okay so what i'm going i'm going to do i'm just right going to write gtech then uh gtech also the password should be gtech123 gtech123 the password of everything actually i'll use gtech123 gtech123 and you click on start yes so we are here system name how do we want to name the wireless LAN controller let's name this wireless LAN controller as a uh, what's the name of the company uh we can just say hq hq wireless land controller that's okay the country is my country time zone baghdad baghdad then management ip address the management ip address should be this ip address okay all right so before i set management ip address guys let me just go back to the packetism huh? and try to over over these access points try to over the over this access point Remember, if you hover over this access point, this one has not picked the right IP address. Let's just make it pick very, very fast. Come back to static and DSCP, and we give it some time, and it should pick 10, 10, 10. Good. So if you try to hover over any access point, like that one, you can see the, the gigabit zero, it's up with the IP address. The dot one radius, radius zero is not set then the cap up status not connected that is the very very important part of this training wireless LAN controller for we to connect to control this access point then the cap up status should be connected to this uh, wireless LAN controller okay so let's proceed all right so another thing the management IP address should be this one which is 10.10.0 dot 50 actually subject mask you remember is 255.255.0.0 the full gateway 10.10.0.1 our management vlan id just leave it the way it is and click next make sure everything is okay and click next good then here let's start um so uh, let's create employee network. We just say employee, employee, the network name to be employee, uh, security name to be WPA2 personal, then paraphrase, we just use GTH123. 
also gtech 123 and everything remains the same just click next and uh, leave this the way it is and just click next so just confirm that everything you've configured is here and it's correct okay so after this one let's click apply and wait you wait until you see this prompt again and just click ok it normally loads very slowly okay just click ok and give it some time so when you go back to the pc just have to give it some time because packet traces uh, don't wait it until it uh, loads don't wait it until it loads just start pinging just start pinging close and start pinging again pinging just start pinging it's it's now pinging so uh we just end the ping it now it is now up so we go back to the browser and uh, type the ip address again so that we can continue the setup okay all right so before we can continue the setup i just want us to make sure that uh, all of these um, access points are having uh, the right ip address of 10.10 .10 or something so this one is still having the previous ip address so just turn to static and DSCP and wait. Alright, so I've ensured that all the access points are having their correct IP address. So let's just type the IP address of the uh, controller here. Dot 50 and hit enter. So you have to wait. Okay, so uh, you'll find uh, after, after waiting for that, you'll find uh, this notification here server reset connection so what you have to do here is just to include s here so that it becomes https and just hit enter and you wait okay so this is our wlan controller just log in and our username was gtech password was gtech123 all right so after logging in you wait until it logs you in and you receive the interface all right so this is the interface of a wireless LAN controller cisco wireless LAN controller so what we want to do first is to check um the available access points just click on the wireless so that you see the available access points that we have in the network so you see all the access points that you have in the network they are here so if you can just go back here and try to hover over any access point, you will see now the cup up status is has now been formed. Okay, the cup up status has now been formed, connected to 10 10 0 50, which is the appearance of the WLAN controller. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead. And another thing, if you try just to hover over the um, access points, you can see the providing WLAN is only employees okay all right so just go on um, proceed configuring just come under wlan still then you give it time to load because this is a packet tracer and uh, it normally have difficulties with the wireless LAN control okay so uh, as for now we only have one uh one wlan by the name employee so let's create the guest uh in this in this in this demo i mean in this requirement we were told to create a corporate Corporate Wi-Fi, external auditors, guests, and employees. So let's create guest, employees, corporate, and external auditors. So let's just start with guest. Just click on go here. Just click on go. Okay. All right. And you give it some time to load. All right. So uh, I want it to be called guest. SSD to be called guest also. And just click apply. And you give it time to load so you can see uh, the guest uh, Wi-Fi has come here so you just click on the uh, number two here so that you can configure it further okay all right so just just give it some time to load all right so when it has loaded the first thing to do you have to enable the status just click on enable status okay and you come under security to set password uh, under layer 2 security click 
and choose uh, choose um, choose this one WPA PA2 okay all right so out of this one you have to choose WPA2 policy here okay just take that one and take PSK all right so let's give the password GTH123 give the password of that Wi-Fi to be GTH123 and you just click apply so you do the same for the corporate and the external auditors Wi-Fi okay all right so I'll do it very fast to save time All right, so uh, we've uh, configured all the all the necessary uh, Wi-Fi networks, wireless networks. So when we click on the VLANs here and let it load, you will see all the four Wi-Fi networks that we want. And if you go back to any access point, you will see an access point is advertising all the four uh, Wi-Fi networks. Okay. Each access point must advertise all the four um, available wireless networks. And you can just connect any host. Let's say we want to connect this uh, laptop, okay, to guest. Let's say the laptop is a guest. Uh huh, WP2K, then the SSD is guest. And the password you can remember is just GTH123. One, but you can just use a, a, a better password, okay? And you just close this one. So this laptop here will connect to an uh, access point that is that it considers IS, is having highest strength or is closer to it. So this laptop here considers this uh, IP to have higher strength than the rest, okay? All right, so if I just try to overwhelm the laptop, you will see the strength there is 100%. Well, wireless signal strength is 100%. So that laptop considers that AP to have higher strength than the rest. So even if you can just try to connect this uh, smartphone to corporate now and see which AP it will connect to. So this IP basically it has it has the highest strength than all other IPs in the network, right? Okay, maybe because it's close to the wireless LAN controller. Okay, and if you can just try to disconnect this IP right now, if you can just try to disconnect, I just try to remove the power cable, power adapter, and let's see which IP they will connect. Let's just wait. Yeah, so you can see they they connect to those APs. So let's just try to hover. You can see the strength here is 98. No wonder they were connecting to the other one which had a strength of 100%. The strength here is 91. Good. So that's why you could see they were connecting to this AP here because it had 100% signal. So I'm just going to return. Uh -huh. Good and I close. All right, so that's completed. You can complete a uh, connection of uh, uh, other remaining networking, I mean, wireless devices that's achieved. So the only thing that's remaining, the IP phones in the network. And we're going to configure this router uh, as our voice gateway to locate these IP phones, dial numbers, IP addresses, and enable them to communicate. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to uh, turn these interfaces up and configure IP address to that interface, okay? So just click it and you come. 
Then interface, it was interface far zero sh zero shash one, something like that. Let me counter check again. Far zero shash one, good. So no shut actually. All right. Then for for voice, remember we want the voice villain is villain ninety nine. So we have to create a sub interface here. Router on a stick and uh, attach that sub interface to VLAN 99. So we're going to create a sub interface by the name interface far 0 slash 1 dot 99. Okay, then encapsulation. Let's bind it to encapsulation dot 1 q 99. Let's bind it to 99 and you hit enter. Then you are sending IP address. IP add, you are sending the IP address of, um, you send it the IP address of um, the first available IP address under voice villain 192.172.16.0.1. Oops. Oops. For voice, for voice, we were not supposed to implement. Actually, we were not supposed to create an SVI because the purpose of creating SVIs is to enable intervillian routing. But you can see clearly that. We're going to do interval routing here. So that is another mistake that we made. So I'm going to deactivate uh, SVI 99 here, both here and here. Okay. So uh, networking is uh, interesting, but it requires time. So recording this video is really hectic. So that's why I really forget a lot. But uh, I'm glad that I remember the mistake and correct them. We have to disable the SVIs both on this switch and here because the interplan routing for voice traffic is done on this route. Okay, we don't need to do it here. All right, so I just say no interface villain 99 and I hit enter. And I copy the same. I copy, do right. I come here and do the same. All right. So now that you remove the um, the SVI for VLAN, now let's re implement the interval routing for void here. So we just assign it a PRS of uh, 172.16.0. Dot zero dot one, okay. The first available IP address and it had IP is a certain password two five five dot two five five dot two five five main dot two fourteen dot zero, okay. Exit and uh, now let's create what's called pools. We create pools for IP phones, DCP pools. So we just the first thing we just service service DCP. That's enabling that service. Then let's create pool IP DCP pool. Let's name it as uh, VoIP. Okay. Then network to be network to have uh, 172.16.0.0 with the separate mask 255.255.240.0. Okay. Then default router to be 172.16.0.1. This IP address, okay? All right, and you hit enter. Then there's always another uh, feature in during uh, VoIP configuration. Just say option 150. Then IP source. IP source. IP just just query. IP to be this IP address 172.16.0.1 exit all right so uh the second thing that we do now we do telephony service just say telephony telephony service then is indicate the maximum number of directory numbers you want let's say we want um even uh 20 IP phones 20 IP phones as per now okay then maximum, then maximum e phones, the number of e phones, let's say 20. Okay. All right. 
So we can just say auto assign. Auto assign one to twenty. Okay. Then let me just query what is remaining here. Okay, so we just say IP source source address to the to be IP address of the default gateway, which is 172.16.0.1. Okay, then port give it port 2000. Good. All right, then another thing that we can do here just exit. Yes, so interface. Not interface actually. So we start uh, configuring IP phone. So just say directory maximum e phone. Actually, e phone. Sorry, sorry. E phone. E phone directory number one. Yes, to have a number of. We were told that the number should start with 3000. Maybe this is 3001. Exit. Let phone number two to have three thousand and two. Phone number two to have three thousand and two. Exit, and that continues until we reach number twenty. So I do it very very fast save time. All right, guys. So what we've done. It's just to allocate the uh, dial numbers to IP phones in the network. So if you can just go down and try to over over any IP phone, you can see it has picked IP address plus dial number. Here, IP address plus dial number. Here, IP address plus dial number. So let's just try to ping. I mean, let's just try to call even this one. You can see it has, take, it has taken 303, 3003. And this one is um, this one is uh, three zero zero four. This one is three zero zero five. So let's just try to call three zero zero three. Okay, so you can see this is three zero zero five. This is three zero zero three. So I just write to three zero 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 three, and you call. See, this one is ringing, the phone is ringing, okay? From 3005. You can pick up. Yes. So you talk with each other, then you hang up. Then try to call 3005 also and call. You see, the phone is ringing from 3003. You can pick up, talk, and hang up. All right, so the, so the phones are working. Another thing that I've not tested is um the aws resources i want to test if these hosts if the inside host can ping the aws resources let's just copy paste copy that ip address of the aws uh, easy to instance okay and try to ping from this laptop let's say this is a laptop of uh, maybe someone uh, who wants to access the resources then try to ping So remember this laptop is at the reception and it's trying to ping AWS resource. So just give it some time if it will ping. If it won't ping, then we have to troubleshoot. But I hope it pings because we implemented firewall policies to allow that. Good, so you can see that's working perfectly fine. So we don't need to worry about anything because uh, whatever we wanted to achieve in this network has already been achieved. So I believe this video has really helped you know, learn a lot concerning enterprise network design and implementation, secure and advanced enterprise network design and implementation. So uh, basically, I just end the video now. It's uh, It has been long since I started recording this video. It normally takes me six hours to record a video and two days to edit it. All right. So um, I believe this video has really helped you guys. So uh, let's meet again when we shall cover Enterprise Networking Project 11. Please, the last thing that you can do for me, subscribe to this channel, 
like this video, share with friends, and drop a comment of a thank you or just a notification that you watched this video. Bye you and see you again in the next video. Thank you all and God bless you.